Here's a paradox. The opinion polls on whether Britain should remain in the EU show a rise in support for membership since 2010. Indeed, according to the YouGov polls, which are a fairly consistent series, it was in March this year that support tipped in favour of membership, and that is after years of support for withdrawal. The latest poll, which is a week ago, has 42% of people saying stay in and 37% saying they'd vote to come out. Now, that is a reverse of the consistent opposition to the EU in recent years. And yet, and yet, the European elections were not good for Euro enthusiasts. The pro-EU Lib Dems were wiped out and sceptical parties did well in Britain, obviously, France, Denmark and Greece. However you want to interpret it, support for the EU is taking a battering in several countries. Uh, one European enthusiast who's... Uh, Thoughts on all of this we thought we might get is Ken Clark, Minister Without Portfolio, sitting in the Cabinet. He joined us on the line from Nottingham. Good morning. Good morning. Why do you think Europe, for at least a very large section of the population, is such a, a battering ram? Why do you think so much blame, if you like, for a lot of discontent is focused on Europe? It's symbolic of uh, disillusion and people are blaming foreigners and blaming Brussels or that section of the population are. Only one in ten of the electorate voted for UKIP. They got a little under a third of a third of the electorate. Uh, so about one in ten voted UKIP. The important thing is really two-thirds of the electorate couldn't be bothered to vote at all. Uh, and uh, I think what we have to do is firstly persuade those people, particularly younger people, actually to vote when they say they're not interested or all the politicians are the same or all the rest of it. We have to make the case, the intelligent case, why it's in Britain's national interest to stay in the European Union and what sensible reforms we can actually make of the European Union that mainstream politicians across the rest of Europe are likely to agree to. Right because well, they face the same problem that we do. We'll come to reforms, but why? what's your theory as to why the Liberal Democrats did so badly? They took the argument on, didn't they? They said, we support the EU. In saying that, they appear to be, in, they appear to be consistent with now a very small, probably rather soft majority in favour of membership of the EU, and they were the party that was wiped out. No one came and supported them, or 6% did, which is hardly anything. Well, I prefer the politics to the sophology, but actually, if you think about the Liberals, firstly, they've lost the protest vote, which was a big part of their vote. If you want to protest, you vote UKIP now, because they've joined the government. They lost about 50% of their former supporters who were otherwise, on the left, Labour supporters who voted Liberal to try and keep the Conservatives out. So the, the Liberals are in a big electoral dilemma. Pro-Europeans probably voted Liberal Democrat at this election, but most pro-Europeans didn't vote. And I think actually we need to articulate the case as to why it's in the national interest, particularly younger people whose future it is, uh, that our prosperity, our political security, our role in the world actually mm -hmm. depend on now being a leading member of the European Union and as I've already said, what needs to be done, because nobody which, which, claims it's uh, perfect no at the moment it's or it's totally, you know, it's an obscure and difficult institution, never reported in the British press, so a particular mystery. Well it's not a mystery, it's, I'll tell you why it's not reported, it's because it's not very engaging when you report it, it's <laughs> normally someone sitting in a, a studio in Brussels with a silly sort of star sitting behind them speaking about something rather obscure that people don't relate to and media have learned that that is not the way to make people interested in the news or in European news. So it doesn't happen. Uh, I quite agree. Better off to go to a United States story no. where they have colourful people speaking yeah. interestingly. <laughs> and sometimes wildly and hysterically in the States. Yes. No, no, I quite agree. I mean, I listen to your interviews when you try and it's somebody with a slight <laughs> English accent and he's talking to his portfolio and he looks and sounds as though he's reading a couple of paragraphs from a dossier. I mean, the, the, the people in the European Parliament who were meant to be the institution addressing these so-called democratic deficit need to address that you've got to make the debate interesting and uh, not about obscurity although of course the day-to-day -day work of Westminster which is not reported and the day-to-day -day work of Brussels is not reported because the real grown-up business of government involves a lot of intricate nerd like yeah. detail I mean I, my European role in the cabinet at the moment is very actively involved in EU 
new US trade deals, deregulation in Brussels, which is going on as fast as it is in London, but we need to take it further to reduce costs and completing the single market mm -hmm. so we can actually get more economic growth by having a proper open market in, say, in the digital economy. Now, if I go on much longer, you'll switch me off and find somebody <laughs> else before 8 o'clock. So, so the, 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 the mainstream thing is, you know, we're in the 21st century. It's, it's no good blaming foreigners, blaming immigrants, right. telling Let on about damn you politicians. You need to look at our role in the EU in terms of, you know, the malaise of the the population how would you there, renegotiate? their prosperity and how their sense you, of security. How would you renegotiate? And I, I'll just throw one thought in before you answer that. The issue which the public seem to care about a lot more than Europe is immigration. And, of course, the two are tied together because you can't do much about immigration if you're in the EU. Well, the first thing is to point out that immigration is a feature of the 21st century in every prosperous Western democracy. The second is, of course, it needs to be controlled. The idea that Theresa May is running a kind of soft ship is absurd. It was very weak in the 20 hundreds. About 70,000 fewer people a year are coming here. But we need businessmen. We need students to come here. We need people with skills we haven't yet trained people for. We need some people to do jobs that British people somehow can't be persuaded to do. And actually, Actually, every Western country is multicultural, multi-ethnic, and everybody gets used to listening to foreign languages on the bus. Young people aren't bothered by that. Uh, but strict, you know, strict, proper controls, rules that are actually enforced, uh, I think demanded by 90% of the sensible public, including most of the immigrants and Ken. children of immigrants who are here. Let, let, let a grown-up debate on Ken that Clark. and say that they're not to blame at what we are going to do about Europe has now to be addressed more intelligently and sensibly. I'm cutting you off. I'm cutting you off, not because you've been boring, but because we have the weather to get to, to squeeze in. <laughs> Ken Clark, thank you very much indeed.